Hello everyone, welcome to Barista 3. Now you might ask, what happened to Barista 1 and 2? Well, I actually played a little bit of the first one, and I finished the second one. And from what I can tell, there's really not much of a connection between them. They're more of a series of experiments than a proper actual series. So don't worry, you're not really missing all that much. Much like Pathways Redux, which I just recently played, this is a mod made by Brendan Chung and released for Doom 3 in 2004. So once again, I'm going far back in time to look at what a game developer made before releasing the bigger projects that made them so well known. I actually originally tried to do a full playthrough of this, but when I finished it, I didn't really feel like it worked for a full playthrough, so I just ended up tossing out the video. And the reason it didn't work is because it's not really a full kind of rounded game experience. As Brendan actually says in the readme, it was made as a testbed for learning how to edit Doom 3. So it's not ultimately a satisfying experience, but there is some really cool stuff going on, and I'd like to show them to you. One of the things that I really like about it is all of the interactivity, which was actually one of Brendan Chung's main goals when he was making it. As he says in the readme, one of my goals was to push for more interactivity. It always bugs me when you enter a restroom and cannot click on the toilet or hand dryer. Does activating a hand dryer really enhance gameplay? No, not really, but it is amusing on some strange, obscure level. And so, in Barista 3, there are light switches, cabinets, drawers, lockers, gadgets, and doodads that you can interact with. And yeah, that's an approach that I really, really like. Because I find that interacting with the environment, even if it's in a way that is not necessary to you know, complete the game or something like that, even if it's just in very small ways, is incredibly satisfying. I remember playing Indigo Prophecy and just some of the stuff that I enjoyed the most was doing stuff like going to the bathroom, washing my hands, or, you know, pouring a glass of water to drink, or getting something out of the fridge. Just really small stuff like that, that was in no way necessary, but it was just very satisfying to do. Same for games like Amnesia, or the Penumbra series, where you can actually grab drawers and actually open and close and push and pull and stuff like that. It's very satisfying. It creates a really nice sense of, of place. It makes it feel more like you're actually here and you can actually do something in the world, and less like the world is just made of static objects that don't really move and aren't really real. It's really wonderful. So some examples of that. Well, you'll find them everywhere, really. Look at this fan, for example. It's hooked up to the switch, which is currently set to slow. Do you know what the other setting is? Mad! It's crazy! It's gone out of control! And back to slow. Totally unnecessary, but incredibly cool and fun. Can open and close the windows, the blinds. Can seal this hibernation pod thing. It's very cool. Flip this to open the door. Just show you some more stuff. This one doesn't open. Let's go down here. And yes, it is very, very dark. That's no accident. It might cause accidents, but it's no accident. It's incredibly dark, which has always been kind of a strange thing of the Doom series, and there's actually somewhere, I don't remember exactly where, but there's somewhere in here where it actually com uh, commentates upon the fact that everything is incredibly dark, and how it causes many, many accidents for all of the personnel on board the base. So some more interactivity. Look at this little thing. This tiny little screen actually displays various disgusting recipes for drinks, I think. Hobo Gibson, which involves four ounces of, uh, three ounces of dirt. The Moxie, which has weird stuff in it. I think the display for that might be kind of corrupted. Mm, oh, this one has crabs in it. Mmm, the train jumper. Sounds delicious. And there's just so much stuff you can mess with. Open up all these drawers. Oh look, something fell out. Can't open the fridge. Unlock me, you bastards! It is incredibly cool how much stuff you can interact with. Here's some more switches. FTL. 
which I suppose could mean faster than light, but they're actually a series of different switches that do different things. For example, F is for the fan that you can't see. Let me turn on the light first. Here we go. F is for the fan. And that's for the table, which turns into an X when it's all folding up. Just all of this interactivity is very, very cool. Here's my locker. So many small details. It's my PDA. My PDA that's full of all of these different emails. I mean, hell, when I originally played this, I just spent like... 10, 15 minutes just reading through all of these emails. It's so cool. Can insert my PDA. Open the door, I think. Hello, outside world. Oh, just got an email. Please let me back in. So yeah, all this interactivity, which is mostly not needed. Like, the only thing I actually had to do here was just get to this locker, take my PDA, use it here, and go outside. You know, that's all I actually need to do to continue. I don't need to do anything else here, but there's so much here. I can flip around with these switches, I can read my emails, I can open these drawers, and there's more stuff this way if I jump over this, I think. Oh wait, no, there's no access there. Okay, can't go any further there. But yeah, there's just so much interactivity. And even though most of it's not needed, it's just very satisfying and creates a wonderful sense of place. Another thing that I really like about Barista 3 is the density of interesting things that there are to find in the environment and how that affects the way that I think about the level. So, what I mean by that is that often in games, rooms are just something I travel through to get to a destination. They're a means to an end. I can just glance over a room for any key items, like maybe literally a key, a key card, health pack, ammo, stuff like that, and then just continue on my way. Most of the level doesn't really matter, and I don't really take it in, and I don't really look at it. But in this case, there's just so much detail just crammed in. It's just so full of interesting things that it basically forces me to stop and really take in the level. It's almost like the level itself is actually a character. I don't just glance for any key items, I just look around at everything. There's names to read, things to open. I just want to look at everything, see if I can read the label of the... whatever this is. Unfortunately, I can't, it's too blurry, but... There's just so many cool things to find. Oh look, here's a bit of text. Unlock me, you bastards. You know, sign. Text. Things to move. Recipes to see. You know, I'm not just moving through the environment and looking for things that I need, I'm actually really taking in the level and really looking at it. It's... it's really cool. Lost and found. Please don't steal. This creepy cat clock thing. All the different names on the drawers. Which are actually real characters that, if you look at your PDA, will pop up. Hey, these are the people whose lockers I'm staring at. Yeah, it's just, it's really cool. So that's most of what I wanted to talk about, but there's one further thing. One thing that I found really, really cool that kind of made me go, holy crap. I kind of gasped with excitement. So you might know that Brennan Chung is currently working on, uh, what is it called? Is it quadra Quadrilateral Cowboy? I believe it's called. I hope I got the name right. Yeah, that's a game he's currently working on. And I was really surprised to find that there's actually a reference to that name in this game, which was made 10 years ago. It's in one of the emails. Let me see if I can find it, because I don't exactly remember. It's in one of these. Ah, here it is. Quadrilateral Cowboy Part 4 is on the telly tonight. Come over. Greatest QC fan, Mars. And then later in the conversation. You're so wrong. Major Longshot wouldn't stand a chance against Quadrilateral Cowboy. And don't even start with Genosha Island, because you know that storyline was a one-shot deal. Defiant Mars. So yeah, apparently the name Quadrilateral Cowboy existed at least ten years ago. Which is pretty damn cool. I certainly didn't expect to see that when I played something that he made ten years ago. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers my thoughts about Barista 3. So to summarize, 
It's not a very complete or satisfying experience in the end, because after all it is just meant as a test bed, and that definitely shows, but what it is is a very cool world to spend some time in. It's a great example of how powerful interactivity can be in a game, even if it is in very small ways. And it's also a great example of how having tons of detail in an environment can make it feel like a real, lived-in place. It's very cool. So, it is of course free since it is a mod for Doom 3, and if you have a copy of Doom 3, I would definitely recommend taking a look at it. I'll have a link in the description to where you can check it out. Thank you for watching.